This is the Pixio PX248 Pro, a 24-inch 165Hz 1080p Nano IPS gaming monitor that comes in at under £140 in the UK. It features compatibility for both G-Sync and FreeSync, boasts a 1 millisecond response time, excellent colour accuracy, as well as an impressively flexible monitor stand. For the price, there aren't many other options. The only one from a reputable brand is the AOC Gaming 24G2 SPU though they have recently announced their 24G4X, which boasts a 180Hz refresh rate and a few other features while still maintaining a price under £150. Maybe that's something I'll have to look into in the future. There is also the Kuguri 24E3, I hope I pronounced that right, which is usually a similar price to the Pixio and offers most of the same features. It's basically the same panel, but with a bit lower peak brightness and much worse stand. But that display's price fluctuates a bit and was regularly priced around £110 over Black Friday in December, but as of right now, they're nearly identical in price, so the Pixio seems like the obvious choice for its more recognised brand and also a better stand. But let's get back to the Pixio PX248 Pro and have a look at what's inside the box. On the top layer, you get a DisplayPort 1.4 cable, the parts for the stand, as well as the super tiny power adapter. Then below is the monitor in its own individual wrapping. Honestly, one thing that surprised me is that Pixio haven't skimped out on any of the packaging materials. The foam is super sturdy, and all the parts for the monitor stand are sleeved separately in individual soft bags. Speaking of the monitor stand, it's a really impressive unit at this price. The feet are metal and have a good weight to them. Then the main part of the stand is plastic. Screwing the two feet separately to the monitor arm was kind of frustrating. It just seems like there's a few too many screws and everything has to be held in place without moving whilst you screw it in. You kind of need three hands for the job. A minor inconvenience, but hardly a deal breaker. Attaching the stand to the monitor is super simple. Just line it up with the cutout on the rear of the display and simply click it into place. If you want to admit the stand altogether, the Pixio PX248 Pro does support Visa 100x100 mounting, so you can mount this to an arm if you wanted to. When looking at budget high refresh rate monitors, having a good adjustable stand and Visa support isn't something you can honestly take for granted. Once assembled, the stand has plenty of adjustment. You can tilt it down five degrees or up 20 degrees, swivel it left and right by 30 degrees, and you can even rotate the display 90 degrees so you could make for an excellent secondary monitor as well. You also get a height adjustment of around 90 millimeters. For ports, the PX248 Pro has two HDMI 2.0 ports and one DisplayPort 1.2, all of which are capable of running the display at 165Hz. It's also nicely labelled on the back so you can see this. So if you plan on pairing this with a PS5 or Xbox Series X, then you're comfortably able to utilise that 120Hz cap on both consoles. As far as other ports, there's not much else to talk about. There's no built-in USB hub or USB-C connections, it's just a DC jack for power and a headphone jack. If you've made it this far into the video, just stop what you're doing and click that subscribe button down below. If you click the like button too, that'd be fantastic. To navigate the menus and turn the display on and off, you do everything with a little joystick on the back. Click it in to turn the display on and off if the monitor has no signal, but when it's on and receiving a signal, then a single click opens up the main menu. You can tilt it in different directions to access different menu settings like brightness or color profile or change your source. One incredibly annoying thing though is that every single time you try to change something in the menu, you just get this stupid warning message that changing the settings will affect power consumption every single time. I can't find a way to turn it off either and it's super annoying. But carrying on within the menus, you can adjust all of your usual settings like brightness, sharpness, contrast, and so on. But you can also enable FreeSync Premium and adjust your overdrive mode. A little bit more on those later. You can also adjust the volume for the monitor and the settings too, because yes, this does actually have built-in speakers. I mean, they're not good at all. They're only a pair of two watt speakers, but I always like when a monitor does include speakers as it can be handy for troubleshooting or if you just want to move the monitor around and actually get some sound out of it. You do also have the option of turning on HDR, but with a peak brightness of 300 nits, it's something you really shouldn't be turning on. It still really annoys me that anybody can just claim their monitor as HDR, but then as soon as you enable it, it just makes the entire thing really dark and just a general worse experience. Now, focusing more on the display itself, it's pretty impressive. It's really color accurate, which is not something you expect from a gaming monitor. The PX248 Pro covers 134% of the sRGB color space, as well as just under 90% of the DCI-P3 color space. And whilst gaming, the colors look fantastic. For me personally, I do find 1080p at this screen size a little soft or fuzzy for day-to-day -day use, 
as I'm just used to 1440p or 4K displays. With a PPI or pixels per inch of 91.79, it's about as sharp as a 2560 by 1440p display at 32 inches, but it all depends on what you're expecting. A 27 inch 1440p display will look a lot sharper as it bumps that PPI up from 91.79 to 108.79. But 1440p displays cost more and they require more powerful hardware to take advantage of them. If you're buying this monitor for gaming and less productivity, then you have a great time. During gameplay, you don't really notice if text is a little less sharp or if an icon looks a little bit fuzzy. But that's probably just down to me because I'm used to higher resolution displays. One point worth noting is that this is an IPS display and a lot of other monitors around this price are using VA panels. IPS panels offer a contrast ratio of 1000 to 1, so in a darker environment, gaming on an IPS panel, the black colours will be slightly greyed out, whereas a VA panel on the other hand has a much superior contrast ratio of 6000 to 1. It has the capacity to show dark environments as darker though it's not quite the 1 million to 1 ratio you see on OLED displays. Now that all sounds pretty good for VA, but in practice you end up with a lot of weird smearing artifacts on display in dark environments, and of course a lot more ghosting. Of course that isn't the case with all VA panels, as the much more expensive ones found in a lot of Samsung displays actually perform really well and don't really suffer too much from this. But on the lower end, especially when the price isn't all that different, you should be considering an IPS display every time. Yes, I know, the actual important part. What was gaming like on the PX248 Pro? Well, honestly, it was really good fun. 1080p and 165 hertz is honestly really easy to drive with modern or even slightly older GPUs, especially in most competitive shooting games. I usually game on an Acer X34P, which is a 120 hertz 1440p ultra wide. And I'd say I actually play better with a display like this. There's a reason you see eSport professionals using 24 inch panels. It's a comfortable size to get everything within your peripheral vision. Ultra wides look great and feel more immersive, but for competitive play, you definitely want something more like this. I did try out the PX248 Pro with my PS5 and it worked flawlessly, allowing me to switch games over to the 120fps performance mode, though not all games like Spider-Man or Horizon Forbidden West will actually run at 120fps. It's more games like Fortnite or Call of Duty that have an actual 120fps mode. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to see what other games can make use of this monitor's high refresh rate. Now let's talk about ghosting and the overdrive modes. But what is overdrive? Overdrive is a function on gaming monitors that prevents ghosting or motion blur in fast moving images. With overdrive you'll increase the refresh rate and lower the response time, so the pixels on the screen change colors faster. Sounds great, right? But depending on the display, if it's set too high, you can actually have negative results. Whilst response times might decrease, it can also lead to overshoot, where pixels change their color too quickly, creating a ghost image in the opposite color, or inverse ghosting as it's known. For me personally, I think Pixel have done a great job with each overshoot mode, though on the highest setting whilst gaming, I feel like I did notice a tiny little bit of inverse ghosting or overshoot as it's also known, but at medium or low, I'd be happy to leave this enabled. I don't have a proper way to fully measure response times at the moment, but I'm looking at getting some equipment to help me test monitors more in depth in the future. If you've got any recommendations for hardware to use, let me know in the comment section down below. But from what I've seen from other reviews, the PX248 Pro is really impressive. So I'd employ you to check out some other reviews if you want more nitty gritty details. For watching TV shows and movies or even YouTube videos, the PX248 Pro looks fantastic. And this is one of the big advantages of the IPS panel as you get great viewing angles as well as more accurate colors too. The downside to IPS is in the dark scenes though, as you can get some rather annoying glow around the corners of the display as these panels are traditionally edge lit not self-lit like OLED panels. You also won't be finding any individual dimming zones on the PX248 Pro either, as its purpose is great gaming performance on a budget. It's not really designed for those jaw-dropping visual experiences. So what are my final thoughts on the Pixio PX248 Pro? If you're looking for a display that's competitively priced, and also a display that's perfect for competitive games, then the Pixio PX248 Pro is a fantastic option. Whether you're playing shooting or racing games, and you want those lower response times, this monitor is fantastic for the price. With its nano IPS display, you're also not sacrificing colors and vibrancy, but with only a peak brightness of 300 nits, you won't be gaming with HDR enabled. But that's not really what you're expecting at 140 pounds. Honestly, I really enjoyed gaming on this thing, and it's kind of got me into the mood for testing even faster displays with 240 or 360 hertz panels. Heck, I'd love to try out the 500 hertz displays we have nowadays at some point too. The pricing is a little bit off, especially outside of the UK, so if you're looking for something similar, consider the AOC monitor I mentioned earlier. Or if you want something more wallet friendly, the Kurui has frequent price cuts, so that could be another solid option at a lower price point. But for an all round, well built gaming display, the Pixio PX248 Pro doesn't disappoint. Anyway guys, that brings us to the end of the video. 
What do you think? Is the Pixio PX248 Pro the perfect budget 165Hz monitor? Or would you be more interested in the 180Hz option from AOC? If you'd like me to check out any other gaming monitors, please leave your suggestions in the comment section below. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to click that like button. And if my face hasn't offended you, don't forget to get subscribed. If you're interested in checking out the PX248 Pro or any extras I may have mentioned, make sure to check the description for my affiliate links. I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Cheers.